Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about bash scripting. So I'm a big fan of bash scripting and I use it for a ton of different tasks whenever I am writing code or just doing anything on my system. Um, and recently I've been talking to some software engineer and computer science friends and I'm actually shocked at the amount of people that told me that they haven't really used much bash before. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you just a simple use case by showing you a tiny little C project and then I'm going to go into some ways that I use it personally and give you some example scripts of some things that I've done. So first things first, let's go ahead and look at what I would use bash for in a C project. So I have a very bare bones C project here, which is literally just one file like this. And here I want to compile and run this program. So if we are just sticking with running commands in a bash cell, rather than actually creating script files, um, what I would do is I would just run, I guess, clang main.c tack o and then main here and then run dot slash main to actually run this program here. Um, so this is fine, but this also means that every time that I want to rerun this, I have to rerun these two commands like this, um, which is like a little bit sort of uh, tedious, you know? I don't like to have to run two different commands, especially that clang command, it's pretty long. Um, so let's go ahead and just quickly write a simple bash script. Um, so I'm just gonna call this bash script run. So just run here, and then I'm just going to do this uh, pound exclamation mark slash bin slash bash here. This is called the shebang, and it basically just tells whatever shell you're in, um, you know, which environment to actually run this script with. So this is going to be running it with the bash interpreter here. Um, so so this is really, really nice because now we don't have to explicitly say bash and then run this command. Now let's go ahead and actually implement the program. So all we need to do is just write what we were writing before. So um, clang main.c l main and then just run our main file like this. And then we can actually make this executable by doing chmod plus x on run and then doing dot slash run like this. And as you can see, it compiles and runs the program like this. What could really be nice and what a lot of modern program build systems do um, is they you know, compile and run the executable and then delete the executable before you can see it. So it's kind of like, wow, it just ran you know, magically. If you're into that kind of thing, um, we can do that pretty easily here. We can just do like an rm-f on main here, and then we can do uh, dot slash run like this. And as you can see, the main file is nowhere to be found. We can make this a little bit more complex. Let's say that like our C program has a build directory that we want to build to. Um, we could just you know make this build directory and do all that stuff manually. So let's go ahead and show the manual approach here. I would do a make dir build. Um, and then what I would do is I would do a gcc main.co build main here. Um, and then I would do a cd build dot slash main cd dot dot and then rm dash f build slash main like this and then it would be all done there now that's a lot of commands so let's go ahead and automate that real quick which is very very simple again because it's just a stream of commands here so now what we can do is we can just delete build and then we can just do dot slash run like this and as you can see it ran our program and it also generated that build directory for future use now let's say that we wanted to turn this into a program that can either build it for like distribution or it will actually just build and run the program and then dispose of things. Um, so we can do that pretty easily actually. Um, and to show that first, let's go ahead and delete what we have now. And I'm just going to do um, echo and then in quotes dollar sign one. Um, so if we do dot slash run like this, as you can see, nothing is executed. But if I do dot slash run um, hello, as you can see, it prints out hello, which means that the dollar sign run is our first argument to our program. Let's go ahead and actually do conditional evaluation depending on whatever this first argument is. Um, so I'm just going to create two bash functions here um, called build and run like this. And let's go ahead and actually like flesh out the logic here. So for building the program, we're going to need to do a make dir dash p build here. Um, we're going to need to do our uh, clang main dot c tack o build slash main like this. Um, and then for run, we're going to need to just directly run it, I guess. So clang main dot c dash o main dot slash main f uh, main like this and that should be you know actually running the program there um, and then to actually do something with this first argument we can do um, case 
quotes uh, dollar sign one it's in I believe yeah it's in and then here we can just have a couple different options here so if we if we put in build then what we want to do is you know build it I guess um, and then if we put run then we want to run it and then we have to just put ESAC here which is just case in reverse to say get out of here in switch statements here or, or case statements you have to put these little dummy uh, double semicolons to say that that is the end of that um, that jump area there and that should be all good there and then we can just delete this echo here and let's actually see if this will work so we can do a dot slash run and we'll do a build and it looks like it built our program there and then we can do a dot slash run and it looks like we have actually ran our program here um, and i'm also going to change this from run to just program because it's now doing more than running our program so now we have this program file here um, and then i would also recommend adding just a little extra statement at the bottom here saying like echo uh, invalid command uh, and then it would be dollar sign one like this like that which we don't need to put this here we can just do this okay because if it doesn't evaluate here, then it will make it to the end here. Um, now, of course, to do that, we need to have an exit zero like this for these two blocks like this so that we exit out of the program early here. Otherwise, we get that invalid command. So now I can just do like um, program hello and it will say invalid command hello, or I could do program run, we have run, program build, there we go. And honestly, I like to have things be very, very concise so that I don't have to type in a lot of letters. So I would also probably put a vertical bar here and make this just B, and then put another vertical bar here and make this just R. So now I can put either build or just B and either run or R so that, you know, there is this, so it's kind of self-documenting, but I can just put in B and R. So now it turns into just prog B and prog R. Okay, but I don't like typing dot slash prog and then B and R. Um, that's too many characters and dot slash is kind of awkward. You kind of got to like roll your ring finger and your pinky if you're using QWERTY. Um, and you know, even though I'm on a split keyboard, by the way, uh, they're still on the corner of my keyboard. So I don't like that. So we can fix that pretty easily. All we need to do is just make a project environment script, right? So we make a little project environment um, and then we do slash bin slash bash. And then in here, I can just make some little aliases and stuff like that. So I can just do alias R equals prog R and then alias B equals prog B, okay? And then we want to make sure that we can actually use this prog env here. Oh, it's not it's not prog env, it's proj env. Sorry about that. Okay. And then we want to just do source um, this project environment. And now I can just do B and I can do R. And there you go. Super fast stuff. This is why I love Bash. Okay, I hope that was enough of a live demonstration to convince you to at least write one Bash script in your life. Um, but if not, let's go ahead and check out a couple different ways that I am personally using it. So I'm writing a little program in Haskell just for fun. And this program relies on a couple different things. Um, it has actual uh, HTML markup written directly inside of the Haskell program. And it also re uh, relies on Tailwind for CSS. And then it has a live server that checks for these updates to the HTML output and the CSS output and then updates things accordingly. So this is actually three commands here. And so normally what I would do is I would open up some sort of split like this and then I would like run my commands, you know, just like run the command and then I would open up another split and then I would run another command and then I'd open up another split and then I just run that command again. Um, but honestly, that's really annoying. And every single time that I wanted to work on this project because it was just a hobby project, um, having to set up all of these pains and stuff was really annoying. So instead I was like, okay, well I can just make a script for this. So why don't I just do that? Um, so I did. So it's just that little tiny script that we saw earlier. I can just do this dot slash watch dev here and it does all three of them for me right there and yes it does kind of just invade your terminal but you know it's 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 just a little tiny script for making things a little bit easier um and as you can see it's showing uh bad 
stuff here. It's a very early on project, but yeah, it's, it's showing some, some little content that I'm writing in Haskell. Okay, here's one that's a bit more extensive that I'm using for my so-called experiments project, which is just basically me messing around and learning SoCal because I want to make some videos on it and make some cool little uh, visual projects. If you don't know, SoCal is a windowing and graphics library and audio library, basically a bunch of uh, low level tools for games and graphics development. Um, and so I have a little bash script here that I use for this development process because, you know, C has C make and make, but it doesn't have everything that I need specifically. So I've written this bash script here. It's, you know, it's only a hundred something lines, um, but it is more extensive than other ones here. Um, and so as you can see, I do the same approach. It's a one argument only script here, but we have like a help command. Um, we have a run command. We have a build command. We have a build run command. We have a um, shaders command, which builds my shaders into actual header files. We have a, you know, generating or like reloading com compile commands.json for Clang D LSP support. And then we have just like a couple other things here. This is for quickly adding submodules because I was, you know, um, adding quite a few dependencies when I first started and I just haven't removed this. And this was honestly just really useful when I was just adding a bunch of dependencies and I didn't want to have to one by one add them to my sub module index. So, and then this is something that's a bit more specific that I'm going to get to in a second. Yeah. But all this serves to just allow me to do, you know, what I was showing before, which is just like, you know, I can just run the program. Um, and then I can, you know, do my, do my programming stuff as I see fit. Um, and that's all I really need. So it just makes it really, really nice for build scripts. Another really simple way that I use bash is I use it for syncing things across different devices. Um, so I use Linux here, but I also use Mac OS for like video editing and just for, you know, like whenever I'm out and about because it has a long battery life. And then I have some other devices that I would like to sync things to occasionally. And so to do that, I have just like one script that syncs the repositories that I really care about. Um, and that script is just this one script that I call sync life because it syncs my life, basically my, my digital life, at least. Um, so all it does is it syncs my notes, it syncs my dot files and it syncs my neovim dot files. Um, and so I just have this simple function here that syncs a repository. It just kind of expects it to work, which like nine times out of 10, it does. And then I just loop over those and sync them one by one. I wouldn't do this with like an actual project, but you know, my notes are, I write atomic notes. So I don't really have a lot of conflicts because notes are very, very small, like, you know, a paragraph or two paragraphs. So I don't have the issues with merge conflicts as much in my notes. It does occasionally happen, but it's usually with some random metadata that I've decided to add into one of my notes and I can just quickly resolve it. Um, but anyways, it's, it's, it's a nice thing that works nine times out of 10. Getting into a little bit more interesting approaches here. This is an actual program that I have on GitHub. I don't know if I've released it at the time of uploading this video, um, but it's basically a program for generating typed containers in C. Um, and so I guess to show you what this looks like, um, we have things like a list which a list will look like this. This is like my list with no types here. And basically what I do is I define a bunch of macros at the top here. Um, and then I use that to essentially create a list like this. Um, and then I actually implement it here. It's STB style. So you have to do a little define to implement it there. And then I have this actual program here, which I'm calling C Theseus because um, you know, the idea with Theseus and the ship of Theseus is that whenever you swap out the parts of the ship and all of the parts are swapped out over time, is it still the same ship? I don't really know. Anyways, a little bit of a corny title, but I couldn't think of anything else. And it's, you know, it's, it's better than just like container generator, you know? So there you go. Quick little program here. And all it does is generate things like a list an arena. Um, it displays help and it does sort of things like that. And it's basically just a glorified said wrapper, which, you know, if you don't know what said is, it's basically just a find and replace tool here. But yeah, it's just this little bash script that I use um, along with a, you know, supplementary bash script for generating um, multiple different ones of these in bulk here. Um, so I have these two scripts here and I use that for generating my containers. Um, and by the way, if you don't know what I mean by that, so you saw that earlier file there, um, I can actually run this CTH here. Um, I want to make one for like a uint32t. 
um, I need to import standard int dot h, and then I want the prefix to be just u32. Oh, right, I actually have to put the, the, the thing I wanna make. So I wanna make a list. Cool. And then all I need to do is output that to a file. So I'll just do, um, I'll just do ulist.h like this, and then I'll open up this ulist.h. As you can see, it has generated a uint32t list for me, um, which is really, really nice um, because now I don't have to be working with a bunch of void pointers or macros. I can actually work with like solid concrete types. So CodeGen is another way that I use Bash quite a bit, especially in languages like C that don't have very good generics. You can kind of get around it with macros and, and opaque pointers, but no real generics. So I really use it there for a lot of code gen. Anyways, I think that's enough examples and demonstrations of why Bash is useful to learn. And so if you were actually like wanting to learn Bash, how would I recommend doing it? Well, the first thing I would do is I would first learn the core utils. Now you don't have to like um, diligently study all of them, but you know, learning ones like CD and LS and CAT and GREP, those are pretty good. You know, get a very base level knowledge of them to know what to actually look for whenever you're writing these scripts. So you're not like reinventing the wheel unnecessarily because these things, these programs here are built in and they're extremely powerful. So please make use of them. Now, as far as the syntax goes, I mean, the syntax for bash is not great. I will be honest with you. Um, there are some really weird things like space dependent variable declarations and stuff like that, that I really don't enjoy working with, but you do have to learn it. Um, so I would recommend just having some sort of reference. I honestly just use W3 schools because it just has everything here. Um, and I do still sometimes go back to this every once in a while because there are some really weird things about the way that bash scripts work. So. I do recommend this. I don't recommend like trying to master bash before you write your first bash script. Um, scripting languages are a little bit looser, you know, just learn what you need to learn to accomplish a task. And the more tasks you do, the more knowledge you'll accumulate, and then you'll be a pro bash scripter in no time. So anyways, that's about all I have to say for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions or anything, make sure to leave them in the comments below. If you want tutorials, like more proper tutorials of how to learn bash scripting, where I go a little bit slower and actually explain some of the things that are going on, um, let me know and I'll make some because I do like writing bash. And if you did enjoy this video and you want more of this kind of content, make sure to let me know by liking the video and also just letting me know in the comments so I will know to continue to make this type of content. And on that note, if you do like this type of content and things like you know software development, game development, uh, Linux, things like that, um, I have a Discord server where I and a bunch of other developers and like-minded individuals love to talk about all this sort of stuff. So if you're interested in joining a community like that, then you know consider checking that out and joining. Also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.